what I mean by earth democracy is precisely what those words mean. A democracy of the earth, of all beings, all species, including all human beings. <laughs> so we are sitting in a very uh, historical place where a woman, as a writer, redefined the politics of this area and the imagination. And I was looking at the photograph of how many women were named after the women in her writings. That's a legacy. Um, but we've had, over the last 250 years, a construction of an ideology, both through the construction of science and the way we think of economics, that has defined the earth as dead, nature is dead, Nature doesn't create anything, nature doesn't produce anything, just a bundle of raw material to be exploited and extracted. And because it's dead, no matter what you do, it can't die, because it's already dead. And along with that assumption of a dead nature, an assumption was created of women, either as passive, or if they should they weren't, then they were witches. And there's the book there from uh, Zagorka. Zagorka on the witches. Because the witches were the learned women of the time. At a time where knowledge was being redefined as an exclusive patriarchal masculine process. And Bacon, who's even called the father of modern science, wrote a book called The Birth of Masculine Time. That after defining nature's dead and women as stupid or dangerous, um, then you have the birth of masculine time. And the 250 years have shown us what this has done. We've had, on the one hand, uh, absolute trashing of the planet. And as you were saying, nature strikes back. Nature is striking back. We had f devastating floods in my region in the Himalaya, 20,000 people dead two years ago. The earthquake. To of Nepal, mm -hmm. which a lot of scientists are connecting to the changing hydrological regime mm -hmm. with a combination of dams as well as climate change and the melting mm -hmm. of glaciers. Mm -hmm. How the river flows are changing the hydrological pressure. Hydrological pressure is triggering seismicity and moving the plates, which are already moving. Uh, there's no static earth. It's a very dynamic earth. Um, you had floods a few years ago. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the United States has a drought so extended that California has no water. They have no water at all, even for household use in many, many places. So nature is striking back. Climate change is one expression. Disappearance of species another. The water crisis another. The second aspect of this is that aspects of the economy which were totally uh, secure, like eating our food, has suddenly become a matter of insecurity. For one billion people, a matter of insecurity because they're not getting food. And they're not getting food because food has been made into a commodity for profit second group of people who are eating are insecure because they're falling ill. They're falling sick. And we've just launched a campaign in addition to all the work we've done with GMOs on, uh, on Roundup, this chemical that Monsanto sells, which uh, the uh, WHO has announced is a carcinogen. But we've, I've also edited a, rec edited a recent <coughs> book, um, and I think it's the first book focusing on seed se sovereignty and food security Se from the women's perspective. <coughs> and it's written by women, including women scientists who are part of our network, showing exactly how glyphosate starts to totally damage our gut, and through the gut, our brain. Mm -hmm. One in 30 children in America is now autistic. Autism means your brain is not fully functioning. The prediction is on this rate of growth of autism 
and it's all because of the environmental problems. That's the rate of growth of autism. At that rate, one in two children in 20 years in America will be autistic. So we are talking about very serious aspects of insecurity in the food system. The third aspect of insecurity with the food system is the destruction of democracy. Something fundamental, you have such a beautiful market. I can choose the food I go buy. By and large, you will also know the vendors. You know where they come from. You know if their tomatoes are good. Mm -hmm. You know if their peppers are good. But across the world, there's an attempt by the chemical industry, which now controls the seed, to deny us our fundamental rights to save seeds, to know what we are eating, to make choices. And I have called this a food dictatorship, a food fascism. Mm. We've known fascism of a political kind. All of those traits of fascism are now entering our daily lives mm. in terms of how we grow our food, what we eat, what it does to our bodies, and the choices we make. So Earth democracy is first and foremost taking the Earth into account as a subject. Mm. The Earth is alive. All her species are alive. In most cultures, all the species have been treated as part of an Earth family. And human beings are one member. Mm -hmm. So we have to go beyond the anthropocentric mm -hmm. world. <clears throat> but the anthropocentric worldview was born with a patriarchal worldview. Capitalist patriarchy and anthropocentrism go hand in hand. And that, and if you just trace the words and their use before 250 years, many words that today are assigned to markets or assigned to uh, masculine behavior were actually women's expertise. The anthropocentrism challenge is therefore the challenge of dealing with capitalist patriarchy, subverting capitalist patriarchy, and the current expression of capitalist patriarchy, which has two dimensions. The first dimension is it is creating what I call an ontological confusion mm -hmm. about what exists in the world, who are the beings in the world. The beings in the world are 300 million species, 7 billion human beings. They're creating an ontology that the species aren't real, we aren't real, our human rights aren't real, our democratic rights aren't real, our economic rights aren't real. The only person with rights is the fiction called the corporation. And they're assigning themselves corporate personhood. That personhood is embodied in the new trade treaties like TTIP the Transatlantic Trade and Investment mm -hmm. Partnership, which has investor state disputes. The legal jurisdiction of countries is taken away so that corporations can sue democratic governments if they t make decisions on behalf of their people through the process of democracy. And the argument is a corporation is a person and therefore has a right to sue governments that interfere. The second expression of this ultimate abuse of power is the fact that 80 men control half the wealth of the world today. 80 men, exactly. Because the processes of neoliberalism, the process of globalization, were processes of unleashing the, the greed, corruption, stealing by those who could be most lawless about things. And so in your country, in my country, there are new oligarchs who have been created who were like other citizens. And 80 people controlling half the wealth of the world, just like I said, one in two American children will be autistic on the current trends, on the current trends of inequality creation. The 
80 people will control the wealth equal to 99% of the rest of humanity. But that means the rest of humanity won't survive. Yesterday I was in CISA and I watched a viable economy dev devastated. Beautiful building shut down. In India, 300,000 farmers have been pushed to commit suicide. We are the most resilient farmers of the world. My mother was a farmer. She brought us up on agriculture. And today, agriculture is being made <coughs> unviable, if it's in the hand of small farmers. It's being made viable for agribusiness, not because it is efficient, but because $400 billion go as a subsidy to keep an artificial system alive. Our tax money is used to destroy the planet and destroy our health. There's a third issue which connects both Croatia and India on the aspect of globalization. In my book, Earth Democracy, I analyze how this taking or shrinking the space of who, whose rights count, and at the end of it only corporate rights count, and behind the corporations are actual people, those 80 people. Um, what happens when the rules are written by them for themselves? The first thing ha that happens is it's it economies, instead of sustaining society, start to destroy the earth and people. The economic paradigm becomes the most destructive force. You saw it in your land, what's happening to Greece today, what's happening <coughs> to Indian peasantry today, across the world this is happening. So I call it a negative economy. It's a negative economy in terms of destruction, but it's a negative economy in terms of taking more from the earth and taking more from society than it ever gives back. Um, and we summarized this whole thing in a new manifesto we've released. <coughs> um, because this year the expo is on food and it's in Milan. And we just released this and we're showing that there are two models of thinking of the economy. The extractive model, which extracts from nature and extracts from society. When it extracts from nature, it leaves an ecological crisis. When it extracts from society, it creates poverty and unemployment. But because society and nature are linked, the soil supports society. When too much extraction takes place, there's a rupture in this relationship. And everything we are seeing in terms of what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening in Africa, the boat people coming in the Mediterranean, is all related to this rupture, where the soil and ecology are unable to support life. But the real economy which women have shaped with nature runs, because nature's economy is the biggest economy. Women are still the biggest economic producers of the world when it take, comes to things that really count. That is a circular economy, a circular economy of giving back and circulating. The wealth, the knowledge, the life flow, the nutrition, the food, everything else. And the rest of this manifesto is actually elaborating how we are creating the circular economy with real life solutions and real life alternatives. But coming back to the negative economy that globalization is, it goes hand in hand with the destruction of democracy. So democracy is as good as dead. Democracy which was of the people, by the people, for the people is now of the corporations, by the corporations, for the corporations. They write the rules. But they can't get there because people will rebel. You're losing your job, you will fight. You're losing your land, you will fight. And what has been found as a way of diversion, distraction and dissipation is to deliberately create identity conflicts based on religion, region, <coughs> ethnicity, whatever can be moved. And in the Islamic world, because everyone is Muslim on the basis of sects, sects who are living together. You witnessed it with the breakup of Yugoslavia. We witnessed this daily on artificially created conflicts between the huge diversity of religions that India is. We are the birthplace of so many. And for the religions which didn't get born in India, the 
Abrahamic religions, Islam and Christianity. They are as old in India as they are anywhere in the world because they came very early to India. Um, so there's a third, you know, democracy is killed but with it culture is changed. Instead of culture being pluralistic culture and positive culture, it's turned into a negative culture. It's turned into my identity is based on your annihilation. Yeah? I think throughout your construction of the language, but it's not something of the past. And if you notice, and I've traced it in this book, the 90s are the time when globalization is imposed on the world as a neoliberal regime. The 90s of the time, all this breakup of society on the basis of identity starts. They're two sides of the same process. Absolutely two sides of the same process. And, and this has created this culture of hate and culture of fear. When I said it's not part of the past, Ruchi, my colleague from Navdanya, was in Berlin and was trapped in riots. There's a whole new Nazi movement whose name is defending ourselves from Islamization. But you Germans living in Germany s define positively of who you are. But you're defining yourself negatively. And then the Nazi thing starts of extermination, to kill or be killed. And that is the attitude with respect to nature, with all the poisons being used, like glyphosate. You got to kill or we starve. And the same happens in culture, you got to kill or we'll be killed. Axis of evil, all that language that was created, is part of it. And the three, the negative culture, the negative politics, the negative economics need to switch. And that switch is what we call Earth democracy, of living economies as new economies, not up in the air, but actual concrete practice. But also a rethinking of the world in a very deep way. The second, new democracies as living democracies, as different from a democracy hijacked by the oligarchs. And the third is living cultures. And that culture is a culture of realizing that we are part of the earth, that we are not separate from the earth. And separation, in my view, is a disease of capitalist patriarchy. Understanding connections, unity, is the way most normal people live, most normal people think, and that's the way we have to create our paradigms of change.